Hello, Sam. How are you? Thank you for being on our podcast. I'm happy podcast and I feel fantastic. Oh, that's that's great. You you are in your 70s, right? A few days ago I became 70 years old. Okay, so are you afraid of coronavirus or, or what? <laughs> no, I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> I'm so happy to to have the the pleasure to to talk to you. Because Paulo uh, is a grew... fan. He, he, yeah, he, he's yeah, super yeah. excited. He's, he doesn't want to show it, but he's <laughs> like uh, on the edge. <laughs> I, I grew up watching watching your your films uh, and many other canon films. And I have to say that uh, American Ninja uh, was the first uh, my my first uh, Ninja uh, experience. It was rented. It was rented by a cousin of mine. Uh, and uh, it, it has uh, it had such a huge impact o o on me uh, because back then I was uh, seven or eight years old, <laughs> and the second ninja film that I saw was The Domination. Both uh. films from you. <laughs> <laughs> One question: Are you Polish or Israeli? I I'm Israeli. I was born in Poland. Okay. But when I was six months old, I was already in Jerusalem. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. So okay. I don't have any memories from Poland. Of I, I understand very little Polish. I'm Israeli. I don't remember any other any other country before Israel. And uh, Hebrew is my native tongue. Is my okay? It, it makes sense. You, you, both your parents are are, are um, uh, Israeli, right? Yeah, yeah. But they okay. came from okay. Poland. You know, we all yeah. came from Poland. Uh, what motivated you to go to American study cinema? Uh, I will tell you, when I was a, a, a young kid, like the, the story you told me about American Ninja, but at the time there was no video, it was in the 50s. I was born in 50s, so when I was 7, 8, 9, 50, 1957, 1958, 1959, uh, I lived in a, in a neighborhood in Jerusalem, and there was a local neighborhood cinema. And in this cinema, in the afternoon, they show two movies in one bill. So it was especially for the children, mm -hmm. for the kids. And they change every week, they change the two movies. So every week I was religiously, I was going to this theater to see two movies uh, in the afternoon after school. Most of the movies, most of the movies, 90% were Hollywood American Hollywood movies. Once in a while, there was a Turkish, uh, I mean, uh, there might be a Turkish movie, uh, Italians, a lot of Italian movies, at the time French movies, but the majority was American movies, Western, crime drama. Same here. Uh, action, World War II movie, musicals, this kind of movies. And that's how I grew up, with American cinema. Fell in love with American Hollywood cinema. I, at this age, when you form, more or less, you form your uh, taste, 16, 17, 18, I did not like Fellini, I did not like <laughs> European yeah. cinema. Action. Uh, Action I driven. Like Action driven movies. films. So yeah, when time course. came, I served in the army. In Israel, the uh, uh, serving in the military is It's mandatory. Yeah. Between 18 and 21, three years in the military. And uh, when I finished, I, I, this is what I had in mind, that I want to get into cinema, to study cinema. And uh, there was no... Uh, many people, many young Israeli who wanted to study cinema, at the time they either went to England, the, the school yeah. in London, the film school in London, or to France, to Paris, to study cinema in Paris. Uh, they yeah. wanted to be Godards, do, they wanted to be Fellinis. They do, wanted you, do you know Avi Nesher? Sure, I know how in it. <laughs> I think he's, he studied. He studied in um, uh, in London before he oh, went what? to. Yeah, many, many. Yeah, Boaz Davidson studied in London. Yeah, yeah, Any yeah. Israeli director, but I didn't have doubt. I wanted to go to Hollywood. I want. I love American cinema. I always like. American Lucky for cinema. you because uh, the guy from uh, Canon was not not canon uh yoran globus was also israeli yeah, yeah. right <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so men are, men are so and Yoran Yoran Globus. by the way even if you go back 10 years earlier i went to hollywood it was 1972 71 70, 71 mm -hmm. I, i was 21 years old menachem golan was in america also studying cinema in new york So, so you were a part of the, of the Canon Films phenomena, 
How did you meet Menachem Golan and Yoram Gol Globus? Uh, 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 so we are going to the same uh, same time, 1972, 1973. I came to Los Angeles and I enrolled in film school, in a college in film school, and I was a film student. And by then, I everybody, almost every Israeli knew the, the name Menachem Golan because he made Israeli movies and, and he was the type of character that he put his name before the title, before the name of the stars of the movie. <laughs> yeah. It was always a Menachem Golan movie. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Uh, we have this producer called Paulo Branco. His name appears before everything else e in the movie. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Menachem Golan was like Branco. And, and uh, uh, so I heard his name. I never met him in Israel before I came to Hollywood. I, I knew about him. I heard his name. Of course, everybody, almost every Israeli. He made a lot of Israeli movies, Hebrew movies. And I was a student here, and he uh, was about to make a, his first directorial uh, producing and directing movie in Hollywood. I, I, went to, uh, I was invited to a party, just regular New Year's Eve party, And I was introduced. Somebody told me, this is Menachem Golan. I started to talk with him. I'm a film student, etc., etc. And then he tells me, I'm making a movie here now in Hollywood with Tony Cortis. The name of the movie is Lepke. It's a, it was a gangster movie. Yeah, yeah. And I, I asked, can I, start, can I work with you? And he agreed. And that's how we got to know each other. I, I, I got a board. I started to work with them. I was a general... Uh, assistant, you know, just mm -hmm. br basically bringing coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I became, basically I became assistant director with this company, with, the, with those two guys. Uh, years later, 1979, I came back uh, and some of the movies were done in Israel. Some of them here, some in Israel. 1979, I came back to Los Angeles to Hollywood to go to school again in a master degree, film school. By then, I already directed one feature when I was in yeah. school in, my, in, uh, in this uh, master degree. And they, I brought it to them. I knew them for many years by now, and they distributed, they took this movie for distribution. And that's how our, our relationship moved from being for me being assistant director in this company to becoming a director. Uh, so, so how did you uh, went from making uh, your first film, first film school of drama, to making a ninja film? By accident. <laughs> <laughs> They made a movie which was called Enter the Ninja with Franco yeah. Nero yeah. and Shoka mm -hmm. This was directed by Menachem Golan. He was the head of the company and he is a director. He directed it. And, uh, you know, they finished it and they sold it. It was kind of a, okay, moderate success, a little bit. And they wanted to do a sequel, which show Kasugi. They liked Kasugi very much. But Menachem Golan, who directed Enter the Ninja, did not want to direct Revenge of the Ninja. Maybe he was too busy with the company, building a company. And I just finished the movie. So... They turned to me, they, they asked me, can you... You were available. I was available. I was in the basically. corridor, basically. I was walking in the corridor of the company. Let's and give something this to movie. this kid to do. That's it. Can you do a movie, action movie? So I said, of course I will direct a movie. And they saw that I can... And basically I can put together a movie, 90 mm -hmm. minutes of story. Yeah. You <laughs> have the skill at least. I know how to put the camera. I know how to put it in editing. I know how to add the music. So basically, I can make a, I can put together a story. A question they asked me, can you do action? Of course, we saw you can direct a movie. Okay, you can direct a movie. Can you put together an action movie? And, uh, you know, I'm a young director and uh, I, I, I'm looking for a chance. I can do anything. To, <laughs> yes. What am I going to say? Of course, I told them, of course, I can make action. Don't you worry. Uh, and, and that's how I got involved in action, by accident. <laughs> and, and it so happened that it was martial art, it was ninja. Uh, it was not my choice, it was an accident. Uh, and so you became a ninja expert filmmaker. The guy to go to when you wanted to make a ninja film. <laughs> <laughs> But I, uh, listen, I learned, everything I learned about ninja and ninjitsu and the subject in the beginning was from Shokasugi. Shokasugi yeah. was my teacher. 
and and he introduced me. He showed me he he showed me those uh, 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 Hong Kong movies, the Chinese martial art movies, and he recommended few books and he he told me about the weapon and about so everything I know about ninja came from Shokasuki mm-hmm. in the beginning. So American Ninja came to you. Menachem Golan, the head of the company, after we did the Revenge of the Ninja and we made the Ninja 3 the domination, suddenly he called me one day to his office and he said, I have an idea. Oh, let's make something different. Now he's American. <laughs> he's an American Ninja. Okay. If you think about it, first you think about it, it's a ridiculous idea. Totally ridiculous idea. Because the whole Ninja thing is connected to... The ninja genre is connected to Japan, Japanese ninja. Yeah. It's always with But Japan. He's, he's and suddenly this comes this producer and he wants to make American ninja. But he started the fashion with it because uh, later on we, you had uh, American Samurai that you directed. But uh, uh, very other uh, filmmakers made uh, American versions uh, of um, martial arts uh, that were strictly uh, Hong Kong made or Japanese made. Yeah, and, and think about it, the, the Ninja Turtles, they are Americans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are, yeah. They, they eat pizza. Like American turtles. It's a know? gold mine. It's a gold mine. You want mine. something more American than yeah. that? Well, so this it. idea was ridiculous, but it was genius. Yeah, 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 of course it was. So we took it. Uh, so again, it fell into my lap. Uh, I continued. By then I was, I already did two Ninja movies. So, you know, kind of, as you say, I was kind of the expert, the, the go-to <laughs> for this kind of movies. And we took it from, uh, yeah. from this idea. And, Now we figured out how do we turn the whole thing upside down, turn it around to become an American subject and not a Japanese subject anymore. So then enters Michael Dudikoff. I learned one thing when we did, Reve- when we did Ninja 3, The Domination. Okay. The first movie, Revenge of the Ninja, I had Sho Kasugi. He was a martial artist. His people came with him. My stunt co- the stunt coordinator, Steve Lambert, was a martial artist. I was surrounded by martial artists, people, they knew what they were doing. When we, did, when we were casting for, event, for Ninja 3, The Domination, we needed a woman, a woman. And so we, you know, I spoke with the expert and we decided that either we find a martial artist, female, or a dancer. Okay. Because a dancer can pick up the, the, the moves very quickly. Mm-hmm. And if, if somebody is teaching her, she will pick up the move. And so, so was the case. We found Lucinda Dickey. She was a dancer. And I, I saw that it's very easy. If they teach her the moves of the martial art, she can pick it up quickly because she was a dancer. When we went to American Ninja, so this was the decision. Either, uh, uh, first of all, we decided to have open call. Open call means that everyone can... apply for the for the job anyone actor non-actor martial artist anyone can come in and we knew all we need is either a martial artist or somebody very very athletic that can pick up the moves quickly we liked I especially especially me I liked my Michael Dudikov the best of all of them and uh, Michael is very very athletic but he had the look he had the attitude And this was more important. It was a James Deanish type of a character, a reluctant hero, somebody who doesn't want to get involved. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and then in the casting, Michael, the way I saw it, the way I saw it, Michael was the, the character that we created on the screen. He was it. He was the embodiment of this character. Tell me, is it true that uh, Chuck Norris was uh, at one point uh, attached to the project? It was. It's true. Nothing to do with me. The, the, the reason we all know it because there is a poster, there is a Canon poster, yeah, American yeah. Ninja, with a picture yeah, of Chuck they Norris. They started promoting the movie before the, there, there was even oh, a script, that, I think. Yeah, this was a, this was a Canon, Canon system. They it used was to normal. promote movies okay. before they had script even. <laughs> And my name is a director, so there is a poster, it's in the book that uh, uh, my, uh, Sidelman just, uh, you know, Sidelman just put together this book. Uh, You know, stories from the trenches. Oh, okay. oh man, and, and I, I have to get that one. Okay. I never met Chuck Norris before and there was no discussion. <laughs> uh, for what I heard, the story that I heard, that he rejected it right away. He didn't yeah. want to be 
Mm. He didn't yeah. want to be any ninja. Okay. With, with, with his face, face with, with, yeah, with his face covered. covered. Yeah, um, that's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, the, the film was shot in, in the Philippines, obviously for budget reasons. How was it like to, to film in the Philippines? Let, let's put it this way. There is no place in the world making movies like in Hollywood. There is nothing. Uh, here in Hollywood is the easiest and the best way to make movies. Mm -hmm. Because of the manpower, because of the expertise, because of the equipment, because everything is here in Hollywood. So that's it. So the minute you go out of Hollywood, it's already a challenge if you want to make a Hollywood looking movie. But luckily in the Philippines, they just finished the movie with Coppola. Yeah, uh, yeah. Apocalypse that, now? That, Apocalypse. That they was just the main reason. Apocalypse. Because they had many trouble with the, with the climate. Because no, it, it, so it's, it's a hot climate. Our story, the story of American Ninja is a hot climate movie. We didn't have any problem. It's hot every day, you know, it's 42, 40, 42, 43 Celsius <laughs> yeah, yeah. every day. But Michael Dudikoff, he had, he had malaria, right? He, he got malaria that's, there. That's, uh, he got something. I, I, I'm not a doctor. I don't know if it was malaria, but Michael got something. So it's yeah. hot and humid and jungle. Uh, so if, if people have problems with heat, it's a problem. Of course, it's a little bit more difficult for action. The, the stunt people, they have to to work in the heat, in the sun. They have to drink a lot. People forget to drink. They have a problem. But <laughs> that's the only problem is the heat. It's hot. Personally, I love heat, so I had no problem. You cannot make a winter story or a snow story in the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it this way. But, but luckily, the crew was excellent. The crew, we had the crew that just finished Apocalypse Now, and they joined us. Mm -hmm. They already, they worked six months on this big, huge budget movie. Yeah. So the expertise was there. The crew is very big. The, there is a system of working in, in And the probably Philippines. cheaper also. Yeah, Much yeah, yeah. cheaper. That's yeah. the reason Canon decided to go to the film. Yeah. You know, yeah. the manpower is much, 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 much cheaper. So working on the script, the challenge was to adapt the story. I believe in American stories. I, I do believe that when you make action movies, <laughs> the movies have to be American story. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the successful movies, especially in action all over the world. So our challenge was how do you write an American story, but it's in the Philippines? And, and, and we resolved it with the, through the military. Yeah, yeah. Milita American it, military American base, base on the Philippines. Yeah. There were, at, yeah. at that time, there were many bases in the Philippines. So I went on a, on a little research to find the bad guy's lair uh, and the climatic fight scene location. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and thanks to Google Maps and some dudes on TripAdvisor, I discovered the, the background uh, is Mount Batulao in, in the Philippines. That's it. You know how many people are asking me, thank you. <laughs> you know how many people are asking me where, where it was and I forgot. Now you remind me the name. It was a little hill. <laughs> I can, uh, yeah. I can give you... I Batula, can... that was the place, exactly. It's Mount Batulao. I can give you the exact coordinates uh, from the um, building where you shot. Yeah, I know where it is. Please, you send me in a, later in the message. I'll send Wonderful. You, yeah. There is no, it's not, there is no town, no city around, nothing. No, no, no the, the place, the, the, the building that the, the house where they fight and everything, it's not there anymore. It's an abandoned ruin, wow. uh, but we can still spot the pool though. Uh, we wow. can. So it was there some rich man house. It was a villa. It was a villa. Yeah, of some yeah, rich yeah. Man. Today there's a golf course right on the other side of the of the street, uh, but the place it's still visible. The, there's the, the pool is still there, for example. So yeah, I'll give yeah, you. Yeah, there the was a lake behind the, and, and there is a lake. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so um, <laughs> another another question. Uh, you saw romancing the stone before shooting this film, right? Listen, uh, again, I love the big budget American action adventure. Mm. I love it. I, and I saw it. Of course, you know, we wanted to talking about, <laughs> about imitation when you, you when you see the, the movie Ninja 3, the domination, there are so many yeah. exorcists, poltergeists, everything is inside. Flesh dance. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I'm only <laughs> commenting this because I just saw the movie the other day. Paulo is like the fan. I'm just a newbie here. <laughs> I'm discovering. Uh, uh, and there's a couple of things I don't get. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I think they don't really fit in this movie. Like, for example, the disappearing ninja. 
What is yeah. that? Why <laughs> disappearing ninja all of a sudden? Uh, 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 disappearing ninja is part of the ninja legacy, the, yeah. the ninjitsu, the ninja. The mythology. The mythology. The mystical story about the ninja. Yeah, yeah but it's the only one. It's just a scene they they goes away and the rest of the the ninjas just lying there on the floor. Yeah. Supposedly, supposedly the ninja know how to disappear. They yeah. they, they are the master of this kind, okay. master of uh, camouflage. When, when you achieve a certain level in the ninja oh, okay. community, so that was that's the an best. Yeah, 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 that was the expert was on the, the group. Best ninja <laughs> of the, of the bunch. Yeah, this is yeah. the legend. That, 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 they are the masters of disguise. <laughs> okay. And what about that laser gun we see shooting only once? Ah, <laughs> when I entered this movie making, this action movie making. My intention was not to make Hong Kong movies or pure uh, martial art movies. I wanted to make James Bond. You know, I, <laughs> I wanted to make okay. Romancing the Stone. So, yeah. but it, my material was martial art, ninjutsu, ninja. So I decided to hybrid, to make it kind of a mixture of so-called Hollywood action, Western action with Eastern action, mix them together. So they let it through a laser, just Western <laughs> flavor to <laughs> the whole thing. So it, you know, and there are many other th other things which are not in the movie because we cut them out. But we tried like all what? kind of things: laser, <laughs> like climbing, uh, you know, bomb. We tried things which are not traditional, uh, not traditional uh, ninja. Yeah. Uh, thing. Did you expect the film to be so successfully? No. <laughs> the, 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 the to be short honest, answer is no. <laughs> but it was an independent company. Canon is not a studio. It's not a major studio. We were in a independent environment, low budget. So we we treated American Ninja in the same way. Okay, it's a medium budget movie. We have a good good uh, uh, elements here, and it's going to be kind of a, the same type of success. But when we started to see the, the daily, you know, we see the day, the, what we film, we see it two or three days later because mm -hmm. everything was on film, not on video. <laughs> yeah. And we started to see the persona of Michael Dudikoff on the screen, the relationship between Michael and Steve James. There was something special. I, I must admit, from the beginning, there was something special that we realized that we felt on the screen. Chemistry. In any case, we never in our dreams, in our wildest dream, we didn't think that it will become what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. American yeah. Ninja, now now it's like 35 years old, more than 35 years old, and it's still going strong. This is phenomenal. The, the first one was such a su success that uh, it had to be a sequel. Uh, and uh, you went to South Africa to shoot it. Why, why did you choose this location? This is a financial, again, it's a financial decision. At the time, you know, American Ninja came out, was immediately big success, and, and the company wanted to capitalize, and, uh, and, and in, in between I was busy, we, we, uh, we made the movie Avenging Force. We didn't yeah. know, you know, when we finished the editing of American Ninja, the, nobody knew the, the type of the success that it would be, and they sent me to New Orleans to do the movie Avenging Force. When we were new and the same actors with Michael Dudikoff, with Steve James, and we are there in New Orleans shooting another movie, and now we start to hear about the success of American Ninja while we are busy with another movie. So they decide, we went to South Africa just as a financial location. The story does not play, take place in South Africa. The story is in some Caribbean, exotic Caribbean island. Which one is your favorite, Sam? The first American Ninja or the second one? No, I, I like the first American Ninja better. I'll tell you, and, and there is a reason. It's a story reason, really a, a, a story reason. In the first movie, the hero, American Ninja, Joe, Joe Armstrong, he, he enters the story as somebody who does not want trouble. He doesn't want to fight with anything, with anybody. He doesn't have a goal, just like in the movie High Noon, the Western High Noon. The hero doesn't want to do anything. He doesn't want to be involved in any trouble. Mm -hmm. He has a certain values, moral values, and because of the circumstances of the story, what happened in the story, he's being pulled because of his values. Mm -hmm. He's being pulled into the action, into the story, and now he has to save himself and save the surrounding. Mm -hmm. So that's the same principle of High Noon. 
In America, Ninja 2, yeah. they, they come with a mission. They have a mission. Michael and Steve, Joe Armstrong, that they, they come to the into the story, they have already a mission. They have to find out something. That's why I like the first one. It's much more sophisticated story. And it's a naive, has a naive uh, love story. I, I, I really like this love story between Michael and Judy Aronson, which is a naive, young, uh, teenager type of uh, yeah, love Yeah, she's story. not, she's not uh, sexualized like most uh, girls in the movies were at the time, right? Absolutely. It, it's, a, it's a naive, it's a real love relationship, love story. And there is fantastic developing story between uh, Michael Dudikoff and Steve James, Buddy Buddy. Yeah. Two, two, you know, two men who develop Got friends trust. Fi fighting <laughs> and friends yeah, fighting all of the sudden. the beginning and then they develop <laughs> trust in each okay. other. There is a big uh, base, fan base for American Ninja 2, but the, the popularity of the first American Ninja is unbelievable around yeah. the world. And with young, even with young people today, I get emails. I just yesterday, I got an email from a father that saw the movie with, with his, his son. son. <laughs> <laughs> with oh. his, he said, I, I showed it to, to the second generation. I, I don't know if you know this, but um, in Portugal, the first film was uh, um, here distributed as the return of the, the American Ninja. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that is that's because they didn't know that uh, there was going to be a second one. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> because when the second one came, they don't know what are we going to call it now, and they <laughs> call it an American the Ninja. Of the return. <laughs> no, it's, it's yeah. an American Ninja. The second one here. Maybe they thought the American Ninja was a sequel to something that was e existing previously. I don't know. Titles yeah. at that no, time yeah. were very, very it was, confusing. Yeah, a little bit because canon film, Revenge of the Ninja, Ninja 3, The Domination. Yes, you know. You're right, you're right. Okay, Sam, uh, this was a pleasure. Thank you so much for talking with oh, us. For uh, having the time. No, no, but now you have so much time. Yeah, so. Everyone has a little more time than usual. But yeah. This is one case that we have to thank coronavirus for to, to have Make the pleasure this to... <laughs> yeah, and to, uh, Sam, please, to talk to you. Uh, you have to promise us to come back and talk with us because we want to talk about CyberCop. I will, it was a pleasure. And we, whenever you want, I will be back with you on the next episode. That's fine. Okay. And uh, and hello and, and regards to all your listeners. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam. Estamos de volta aqui ao Sfado.